on today's episode. Recently I uploaded a video where I showed how to build this uh, Haku T12 soldering iron and uh, I was very pleased with the results of it being temperature controlled and uh, very quick to, to, to warm up and I was wondering how it would compare against my venerable uh, Weller soldering iron. Now the Weller is also temperature controlled um, but uh, it is showing its age and uh, perhaps it is time to move on. So what I really needed was a, a project to, uh, to test the soldering iron and indeed my own skills and I came, came across this, uh, this project here of building this um, LED like cube, it's not actually a cube, it looks more like a, a sort of a balloon shape um, but it shows uh, obviously you have to solder all of this to, together and it's going to be quite tricky I think and the, the, the effect ultimately is, is quite pleasing so let's get this uh, kit built up and we'll see how the soldering iron performs in, uh, in real life. Here we can see the kit contents and apart from uh, a mountain of LEDs um, there's only a few components to do really. Uh, main integrated circuit with its socket, uh, nice little circuit board clearly marked out and what appears to be some kind of jig for, uh, for putting the LEDs in to, to, to help with the soldering. So um, that will be interesting. There's, the instructions are, are pretty vague on the, on the, on the web. Um, just one tip here. Uh, you don't want to be soldering all these together uh, only to find out that one or two don't work. So it's always useful with a little lithium cell just to be able to test it doesn't matter if you get it the wrong way around and you don't need a limiting resistor. Uh, so we can test each LED before uh, we go through and, and, and solder it. So these are quite neat uh, colour changing LEDs. Slow and, and fast mode. So as I say there's a mountain of those and a little remote control. And uh, this uh, is going to be the, the test for the, for the soldering iron to see if it's worthy, a worthy successor to my, uh, my vintage Weller. So just before we start, for those of a, of a curious mind as to how accurate the, uh, the temperature display is on there at 300 degrees, let's just test. Uh, this is one of the advantages of having a silicon mat. So I would say that um, that was fairly, fairly accurate. Now on with the build. Clearly the first thing we need to do is to assemble the actual circuit itself. And I like to follow the rule of uh, using the, the lowest profile components first. So in this case it's going to be this uh, resistor. And as mentioned before, not a good idea to let legs and things ping around when you're cutting them off. Always pick them off and, uh, and dispose of them properly. So next, I think, in terms of profile, will be this socket. Clearly it has a notch in one end to uh, indicate where pin 1 should go. And I noticed on the instructions on the web, this was showing a crystal and some capacitors underneath, but obviously that was a, a different version of the board. Now there's four LEDs on the board and they're identified by a flat on one side, which is the, the shorter leg. I should have mentioned before that I have actually tested all of these with the, the little button cell beforehand so I know they're good to go. The socket here I guess for the audio is a kind of a surface mount type arrangement uh, with a couple of locating lugs on, on the bottom there. 
So when these little spaces and things are installed on on this side, the actual this is the the base where the LED structure will uh, will come from, and to control that by the infrared control, we just put that on. Make sure to put that on this side. It's clearly marked on the circuit board as to which way round it should go. Now we can actually place the circuit in. Now usually these pins are, are spread quite widely apart so I just put them on a on the bench there and gently square them up and the, the notch here clearly will line up with the notch on the socket. Just checking there that uh, none of the pins have uh, slipped down to the, the side outside the socket. That all looks good to me. With the main board complete, it's time to do a test, and before the test, just do a visual inspection. Uh, all the joints look good, and the components are hopefully they might be around and things. So, this takes a standard 5 volt USB type connection. Let's connect that on there, switch on and uh, see what happens. So that's a good indication that things are good. The, the chip is obviously working and we're getting our, our sequence of the, of the four LEDs on the board. There is one more test that we should do before we get uh, into the really interesting work of assembling the LEDs. And that is just to test the uh, the configuration here. So uh, you take one of the long legs and put it in any of the uh, uh, holes, which are called Y zero, I believe, and the shorter leg in the in the outside one. We'll just prop that up there for the moment and switch on again. So in principle, all is good. So the next. Uh, the next job is to start building with our, our jig here, the, uh, the balloon shape itself. Now we're ready for the really fun part, uh, building up the, the first layer of, of LEDs. Obviously the first thing to do is to check that it works. And then the longer lead you have to bend at 90 degrees, just leaving the short lead up. Now you can do this by hand, but obviously you don't want to be doing it backwards and forwards um, because it will just simply break off. So that's how we need to prepare the, the LEDs. I'm sure by the end we'll have this off to a T or even a right angle. Having prepared the LEDs, we have to identify which layer they're in and with reference to the uh, documentation which I'll provide a link to as always down in the, in the description uh, and in time-honored fashion here's one I've prepared earlier so it's simply a matter with the short legs pointing up to solder each one in in, in sequence now the inner ring here we want to be the next row of LEDs outside of that so the next one here clearly will go into this position. And just push it down. And I found the, uh, the best way is to kind of solder from the, from the side, checking visually that obviously the, the, the legs are touching. And then just to put a little solder joint on the, on the cross there. And we're good to go. We'll go on to the next one. You can see how much fun this is going to be. I think I'll decide to solder that to that leg, so we'll cut this one off. I'm sure there's some uh, some Chinese guys out there that can do this in their sleep. Have completed the the first ring, and obviously, or well maybe not obviously, each ring has 16 LEDs. And again, we can 
do a quick test just by uh, putting the, the positive side onto the on the edges that's the positive side so on the edge and then with each of the short leads we know that that's going to work now so it's a question of lifting this off and offering it up to the the circuit that we have here here I've put the first layer of LEDs on and it says to connect the common to Y13 now on this particular re revision of the board we do not have a Y13 uh, the highest number is Y10 so I've made an executive decision and we're going to start with uh, 10 and then work our way around until we either run out of LEDs or, or, or holes to put the wires in. So now we need to test the, uh, the circuit. So again, simply power on. And we're getting quite a, a pleasing display there. So we'll go on and uh, mount the next uh, layer. You can see how the sequences are going to, to build up. And uh, OK, it's uh, not perhaps very regular, but uh, I like to think it as more artistic. Here on the larger circles, it's uh, a little easier to see the, the, the soldering uh, technique. So as each of these goes around, you just simply solder the individual leads together. And it, it makes for a reasonably neat job I think. So we've done five layers now and the sixth layer is a little bit different in as much as we have to bend the, uh, the, the legs out and uh, that is the same for the next two layers after this as well. So simply with a, a pair of uh, pliers try and get it about the right height and just gently bend that up. Right, now for more soldering. So we're down to the last LED and uh, just another little tip for you. Um, it's not always obvious um, when you're soldering these, these layers where the, um, the, the layer above solders to. Now what I found quite useful, um, you can see it on the, on the camera, just under where my thumbnail is there, there are two little marks on the from the manufacturing of the of the LED and I found that soldering onto those points um, gave me pretty much the spacing that was that was needed so this guy somehow has to go in the middle there well after a marathon uh, soldering event uh, finally have it completed so you're looking at 153 LEDs so there's nine rows of 16 and then one of eight and then one solitary one at the top there and i'm very pleased with the way that it's it's turned out okay some of the uh, the bending and things is a bit a bit tricky so it's come out perhaps a little more rustic than uh, than i wanted but uh, there we go now it has all sorts of strange features on it there is a an audio socket here uh, which says out, so I have no idea what that does. The provided cable um, has a USB and uh, a jack for feeding audio in for doing some sort of spectrum type display. Um, that doesn't interest me greatly. And also there's a little remote control. Equally, I don't see myself using that. The, uh, the main purpose of the kit really was to uh, give the the soldering iron a good old workout and uh, yes I think it's going to be the replacement now I've been using it for a couple of months since I I first made it and uh, my weller has been retired to uh, to another another location at the moment so I'm very pleased with that soldering iron and uh, also don't forget that there's a, a range of tips available for it um, suitable for Anything from the tiny one here for, for BGA type work up to uh, the knife edge that it, that it came with. Uh, perhaps I'll find a use for that one day.